In this next video, we are going to take a look at creating a profile from a layout based on our existing ground in an attempt to design, say, the center line of a highway. Now, in the previous video, I inadvertently selected design ground for my existing ground, so that's why it appeared the cyan color. So I've just gone into my profile properties and changed that. So select your select the gray dash line, or sorry, your cyan line profile properties and just select the new style you want. So I select the existing ground and hit okay. Now in your tool space under the prospector tab, we're gonna expand alignments, we're gonna expand center line alignments, we're gonna expand highway. So everything related to this alignment, including profiles, your profile view, the green box, your profile itself, any super elevation view, sample line groups when we get into that, will show up and be accessible through the alignments dropdown. Under the profile views, highway, so I only have one profile view. When we get into a later video, we should have a few more profile views in here. But this is where the profile views show up. Under profiles is where the lines within the profile view appear. Now I've named this one highway, however, this is highway but it's the existing ground. When it comes to building profiles, I definitely stress that you need to name these properly because when you go to build your corridor, if you inadvertently select the wrong one, it's not gonna give you what you want and you're not gonna figure this out until a much later time in your drawing. So come in here and make sure to absolutely name everything. Remove stuff from this profile list that you don't need. That way you have less information to choose from and less mistakes can be made. Now to get onto this next video, creating a profile by a layout. So we've defined our existing ground here. Let's come in and sketch our highway. So under the profiles drop down, we're gonna create a profile by layout. Civil 3D asks you to select the profile view to create the profile in. So I'm going to select this green boundary. I'm going to name this Highway Design Ground because this will be my design line. Under my style, I'm going to make sure to select Design Ground so it should appear that cyan color. My profile label sets, we'll just leave it on two millimeters. Design criteria. Again, this is a US based program. So if you're in the US, you can definitely turn this on and Civil 3D will monitor stuff for you. However, I leave this turned off because I don't want all these large warning symbols saying that I've designed this wrong when in fact I haven't. I've, I've designed it to the Canadian standards. It's gonna make a layer for us. And we already talked about the labels, so I'm going to hit okay. Up is going to pop this toolbox, so Profile Layout Tools, which looks a lot like the Alignment Geometry Editor, and in fact, a bunch of the buttons are kind of the same. They both make curves, they both make tangents. They perform the same functions. Now there's two different ways of doing this. So we can draw tangents. So like in alignment, we can draw tangents, click, 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 and we can come in and put the vertical curves in later. We can draw tangents with curves, so we can have Civil 3D attempt to put the curves in for us. If we look under curve settings, we can select curve types. We have parabolic, circular, asymmetric. We'll just leave it on parabolic. And we can do a length of curve or a K value on our curve. So crest and sag, we can do length or K values. Now, if we're designing a 120 kilometer an hour road, the K values are 130 and 70 where I live. And I've already got them built into Civil 3D. So that's just a default under the commands that we looked at in a previous video. So I'm gonna leave them on 130 and 70 and hit okay. Just looking at a couple of these buttons, actually we'll look at those in, a, in another video. I'm gonna draw tangents with curves. So I'm gonna click the drop down, draw tangents with curves. Now, if we plan on building a corridor off of this, we have to make very, very, very sure that we zoom in and we snap to the end of the existing ground here. If we inadvertently snap here, 
when we go to build the corridor, it's going to build a giant hole down to zero because we have nothing to define it by. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to place my first P, uh, PVI at the end of this existing ground. This is where you would tie into, say, an existing road and you'd match the slope from that road. Now we have to work left to right because that's the way the profile goes. It starts off zero and goes to 7,000. Now, I, my general rule of thumb is when I'm designing a design profile, I try and get the first run, the cyan line, to be about 50% above the existing ground and 50% below the existing ground. This all comes into when you're designing and the, they go to construct this road and they start moving materials. So I'm going to place my first vertical curve here. And the way I'm looking at this is this dirt that's, so this, uh, our design lines under the existing ground, this dirt that's going to be dug up can theoretically be placed in this location to fill this up. So I'm moving dirt from here to here. I'm not trying to move it across the entire map. My next vertical curve, I'm going to place, we'll say approximately here. I'm going to come back down the hill. Oh, and I accidentally clicked enter there. So that can show us how to add on when we've inadvertently ended the command. So this drop down here, I can do a fixed tangent with two points. And my last little bit, I'll do a tangent, then I'll add in the curve manually. So I'm going to draw a fixed tangent two points. I'm going to snap from the endpoint to the endpoint over here. And if I hit escape now, it should add that into my profile. I'm going to draw my vertical curve. So fixed vertical curve, uh, sorry, free vertical curve parabola. I want a vertical curve from here to here. And I'm going to do K value of 70. That's my standard and hit enter. So I've come along and I've drawn my profile and I've tried to approximate it 50% above, 50% below. There is a river in this location, so we will be building a bridge over top of this empty space here. Now to take a look at what I've done, and we'll probably look at this dialog box again in a, a later video here. If I click on this profile grid view, it tells me information about what I've drawn. So from zero to 2,339, I have a grade of 1.7%, so it goes up at 1.7%. And the next leg here is 1.17%. Then we start going down at minus 2.4%. And then we flatten out to minus 6.8%. So the, the grid view here can definitely give you some information about your profile itself. Also, when we're designing a vertical profile, especially for a highway, we want to minimize the amount of vertical curves. We don't want 100 vertical curves in this little tiny section. We want as few as possible. That's because it's safer for the driver. So that was a quick video on creating a profile by layout.